guys, it's Elise and welcome back to My Cupcake Addiction. Today we're going to be making popsicle piñata cookie pops. So there's a hidden surprise inside, hence the piñata. They're popsicles, they're made out of cookie dough and they're on a pop stick. There's a whole lot going on here. The things that you're going to need to make your popsicle piñata cookies. I've got some of my delicious vanilla sugar cookie dough. Now this is actually only a half batch and it's quite firm, it's just come out of the fridge. But I always refrigerate my cookie dough in halves. I've got some sprinkles. I've also got some melted dark chocolate or candy melts. I have two circle cutters. This one here is about three and a half inches and the other one I think is about three quarters of an inch. Some popsicle sticks. I've got a paintbrush and a snap seal bag. And I've also got just a couple of colorings. I'm gonna show you a unique way to color your popsicles after we bake them. A little flour for rolling out my cookie dough, a baking tray, a knife and a rolling pin. Let's get started. So the first thing you wanna do is roll out your cookie dough. You need a generous amount of your plain flour down. And I'm going to roll these quite thin because three cookies makes up one single piñata pop. So we want to make sure that they're kind of in proportion with what a real popsicle would look like. You'll notice I keep on picking up my cookie dough and moving it around just to make sure I get a really nice even roll and to stop it from sticking to the bench in any one particular spot. All right, so that's about how thick I've gone. It's not super thin, but it's certainly not a big thick cookie. So for each, I'm going to need three circles cut out. So six circles is going to get me two finished pops. We're going to trim some of the sides off, so don't worry if you're ever so slightly over some of your little edges, so long as your tops are nice and round. Perfect. Now for each of these, I've got these little sides here that I definitely want to trim, but I'm going to stack these three on top of each other because I want each of these to be exactly the same as their little partners or their little pairs. So three go on top and then another three go on top. And if I've got any that need a little edge trimmed off, that's going to go on the very top so that I can make sure that I get it all. Using a knife, I'm going to trim off the side, the other side, and then the bottom. Go a little wider than you think first, just in case you cut off a little too much. We can always take it a little skinnier, but it's hard to add more on. Something like that is perfect. And try and keep your little sets together here because we've really gone to trouble to cut them so that they're all perfectly sized. Then rounding off our little edges so they're more popsicle-like. Now bring over your baking tray and your main pieces of popsicle can both go right on top of each other. And then your centre pieces kind of need a little space because we're going to put a pop stick in them. Take two pop sticks now and don't try to stick them into the cookie. We can have fixed these a little bit better with some chocolate at the end. We really just want to make the nice indentation for it so that it doesn't add any extra bulk to our cooked cookies. As you push that down, you may notice your cookie spreads ever so slightly, just where the popsicle stick kind of like widens it out by pushing some of that dough out. So I'm just going to trim the tiniest bit off each side. Now I waited to trim my little centre hole out until they're all on the tray because I don't want anything stretching out of shape and once you do trim the little centre hole out, what you end up with is kind of a bit of a flimsy mess to move around. So I'm going to use my circle cutter because it's the easiest way not to have any drag and just cut a series of little circles only in the very top half of my popsicle. Perfect. Now I've worked pretty quickly so my dough is still quite cool to touch. I'm going to pop those straight in the oven, but if your dough's not cool anymore, you need to put it in the fridge for about five or ten minutes before so that it goes into the oven nice and chilled. Those guys are going to bake for about seven to ten minutes and keep an eye on the centre ones because they'll start to brown around the edges just a little bit earlier. But you'll know they're done when they're all starting to just slightly colour around the edges. Once those ones are cooked, you just want to take them out. You can leave them on the tray for a few minutes till they're touchable and then transfer them onto a wire cooling rack until they're completely cool. Once your cookies are cool, now you have a couple of options here. You can leave them all naturel and they can stay in their lovely light cookie colour. But I wanted to colour mine separate colours without having to go and dye individual portions of cookie dough. So I tested and it worked, actually painting it. I've got a little bit of food colouring in about two tablespoons of water. And I'm just going to put a drop of food colouring into each of my little bowls and stir it through. I'm literally going to paint these cookies with the food colouring straight on the cookie. I think this is a really cool kind of a cheat to save you hours of colouring and dyed hands. So I've got my purple mixture and I'm going to paint directly on that cookie. And it'll go a little damp for a few minutes but it'll dry right out again. Alright, so maybe neater was not the right word to describe that but certainly less labour intensive. So I've got some of my chocolate now in a snap seal bag or candy melts. You either need a compound chocolate or a candy melt, something that's going to set at room temperature. So I'm going to snip off a very, very small tip because I only want to join these together with a really small amount of chocolate. So I'm going to flip one of my little back sections for each of my colours. I'm going to paint a very fine line, just about 
a mil or two in from the edge. And then on goes my middle joining piece. Now you'll notice one of my sticks didn't stick and the other one has. Regardless of whether it sticks or not, I'm still going to add just a little bit of chocolate in there just to sort of join it all together because they have a tendency to come a bit loose. And this guy here I'm just going to affix back on with a little more chocolate. No one's going to be disappointed with unexpected chocolate in the middle of their cookie. I'm going to fill my little piñata holes with sprinkles and then another fine line around that outside edge and on go the tops. Our two little popsicles. Once you're happy a little popsicle set, I'm just going to dip the very, very top section into my melted chocolate, but I've also got my snap seal bag at the ready because I want to make this look like a dripping popsicle, but with a really neat orchestrated drip. So in goes my top to give it a nice coating right across those three layers. Bring it down, give it a couple of taps just to even it out. And then I'm actually going to take my snap seal bag and I'm just going to draw kind of a cartoon-esque drip and fill it in. Don't forget the sides. Once you've got your little orchestrated drips, I'm just going to tap my wrist and then we're going to give them a sprinkle because all good popsicles come with sprinkles. Look at our little perfect popsicle piñata and only we know that there's a hidden surprise inside just waiting to bite into. I would suggest serving those with a bowl of ice cream so your guests get cookies and ice cream and they can sprinkle their own ice cream with the sprinkles from inside their little surprise cookie pops. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. If you want to see tons more really cool ideas for things that have surprises inside, I'll leave a link to my surprise inside playlist down below. Thanks very much for watching.